This is our Forex blog for October 12th, 2012. And like we do most days, the first step of our three-step Forex trading system is to use our sophisticated currency meter to find which currencies are strong, which ones are weak, and buy the strongest ones versus the weak, and sell the weakest versus the strong. You can use our sortable one and sort it from strongest to weakest or weakest to strong. And I like to sort it by the hourly trend. The real-time trend is in histogram format on the top. This is the Build Your Own Trend Tool, which allows you to set whatever weights you want. Uh, I'm working on a new one that will incorporate uh, longer time frame trends into this. As you can see, uh, very fast statistical time frames, uh, the weight and then the, the settings for whatever uh, tool you're using. And some of these tools measure the direction, and in, in this case the pounds moving versus all the rest and the other tools measure the intensity of duration. So anytime the pound's going up versus 75 to 100% of pairs and doing so with significantly above average intensity, you're going to have uh, readings that are at or above the 80 level. And those trends tend to continue, even more so when the daily, weekly, monthly trends you know, line up. Uh, many, many traders, especially new ones, have told me that you know, having so many different time frame trends on here confuses them. The real time trends up, the 15 minute trends up, the hourly trends up, the daily trends up, the uh, weekly and monthly trends down. So I'm coming up with a new one of these. Uh, it's going to be called the same thing, but it'll have the options to weight the daily trend, the weekly trend, the monthly trend in here. So you can just have one histogram factoring in all the time frames and then just cherry pick and trade the ones that are going up or down versus the most time frames like the Australian here. Very weak today, 15 hourly, daily, monthly trends down. The weekly trends happens to be up, uh, which can happen when, you know, the Australian, let's say, goes down for a month, month and a half, and it goes up uh, very strongly for a week and a half or two weeks, and it starts going down again. The daily trend shifts down. The weekly trend's still up. The monthly trend's still down because the previous up move in the weekly time frame wasn't enough to change the monthly time frames trend. And, and that's really probably what confuses so many traders. Focus, if you, if you really want to keep it simple, uh, until I release the new tool uh, early next week with not only our new FX trade signals, but also with uh, a histogram build your own trend tool that incorporates all the longer time frame ones, I'm going to factor in probably about 30% weight total to the daily, weekly, and monthly. More time, more weight for the daily, less for the weekly, and very little for the monthly. The monthly trend is not going to affect the trade today very much, and neither does the weekly. The daily trend has some impact on it, uh, but mostly the real-time momentum. What's happening right now? Are they buying? Uh, you can see here the Swiss today up on all time frames. Which currency was down on all time frames, especially earlier in the day? Uh, you have pretty much the pound. Uh, earlier in the day. So the pound Swiss would have been an excellent one uh, earlier to be looking for sales because all the time frames are going in the same direction with a lot of intensity. And you can see what, what direction the pound Swiss go. It went down 10, 20, 30 pips before that trend continued. We have basically two entry methods that we use for uh, getting into trades. One is the sideways rectangle consolidation. Let's scroll back here and see where the high was. And a lot of times, if you get into a trade like this, it breaks out and comes back up. I'm going to get out of my trade here with a small loss. Get back in it again here. You can see it fell uh, about 20-something pips. And then you got a decent pullback right here. Uh, always draw your fibs on there to get a feel for uh, you want to get short somewhere between the 50 and 62% fib. And you can see it came up. The 50, if you got short right here and you put your stop over the 62, you never got stopped out and then pulled back another uh, 25 pips. You can see 6 to 8 o'clock right here, that pound uh, is no longer weak. And in fact, uh, at 3 o'clock, it really started to become pretty strong. So that being said, you probably would not have taken uh, this secondary trade in it. You would have still made money on, the, on that earlier trade. You want to focus on pairs that are, like I said, all pretty much going in one direction. So you can see here that with the Australian, mostly down today. Later in the day, the pound uh, real-time trend was one of the strongest. The Swiss was as well. Let's take a look at selling the Australian versus the Swiss. Because remember, the pound has a weekly, monthly trend that's down, whereas the Swiss 
uh, is up on all time frames. And so when the new tool we release next week uh, comes out with a histogram format, this is going to show even more strength today than the pound, even though the real-time intraday momentum of the pound was stronger, the weekly monthly trend was was down, and so we're gonna that's gonna have the effect of minimizing uh, the appearance of strength here. Whereas this one has lots of strength, the longer time frame trend is up, that's gonna push the real-time momentum uh, up, and it's gonna appear stronger than the pound, and you won't have to look at all these longer time frame trends and decide which one you want to go with. It should make it simpler, especially for new traders. More sophisticated traders like myself, who have been using our software for years, might want to have the added benefit of knowing that a currency is strong on all time frames. And another one, like the Australian, is weak on all time frames. But basically, in a nutshell, when you have a currency that's strong on all time frames, like the Swiss, and in this case, the Australian is pretty much weak on all time frames, you can see a nice 20 pip drop here. And I ideally would want uh, a 50, 62 percent pullback. This one is so weak that it doesn't go back up. And so our second entry method is basically a half an hour to two hour sideways range. And this is actually better than a, a sideways rectangle. This is actually a, a pennant pattern. Once the market kind of falls, it goes up, and it gets lower and lower volatility, when it breaks out right here, it's very likely to break through the low. And you can get into it at a much more advantageous price. You draw your fibs on there to get an idea of where your profit target is. And sometimes it goes uh, to the first fib target. And typically, if it breaks the first fib target, probably 80 90% of the time, I'm going to get out up to 1.618. The vast majority of the time, that's the most profit you're going to make. So you would have been short this uh, around 80 out of this trade here at uh, around 50. That's a nice 30 pip profit while risking only 10 pips. And that's the key to trading. Small losses, big wins. You, you really can't worry as a trader about whether the trade's going to work or not. And if you're really concerned, one of the uh, relatively easy uh, ways of trading is trade significantly smaller lot sizes than you can based on your account size. And if you have a you know two, three losing trades in a row, then double your trade size. And you know a lot of times with one nice 20 pip win with a double size, you know, think about it, 20 pips on two times your normal trade size is equivalent to 40 pips. So if you lost 5 pips on one, you lost 8 pips on another, you're only down 12 pips. Uh, if you trade the same lot size and you make 20, you're up 8 pips. But if you double up and you're up 40 pips, guess what? Now you're you're up uh, the equivalent of, equivalent of 28 pips. So there's a lot of things you can do once you know your stats. If you're normally 55, 60, 70 percent winning, on good days and you're just horrible one day with you know one one out of three winning trades uh, if you see a very high probability trade you know trade more lots on it and you can by that method uh, get back losses uh, easier so you can see today the New Zealand was pretty much strong on all time frames you wouldn't want to trade the New Zealand versus the Swiss because they're both strong and that's how our currency meter uh, pretty much is designed to work uh, the New Zealand Swiss probably also went down but it didn't explode down, and you can see other than this first 20 pip drop, it pretty much chopped around uh, because both currencies were uh, strong at the same time, and you're likely to get a very choppy uh, price action. Um, the euro was also strong today. It's all The Swiss is pegged to the euro, so when the euro is strong, the Swiss is automatically strong. So you could have traded the euro against the Australian also, and a lot of people might prefer to do that. The euro, Australian, strong euro, weak Australian. You can see just absolutely uh, the first trade went up about uh, 40 pips. And then because there was not enough of a pullback here, you have the exact opposite pattern, nice little wedge pattern breakout. And draw your fibs on there to get an idea of where the next uh, profit target is. And most of the time, if it goes slightly above the first one, it doesn't quite hit the second one, I'm typically going to get out. I'll be out of this whole trade right here. And again, there's two methods we use to get in. One is a sideways rectangle pattern, which just is absolutely perfect. Anytime a currency is strong and you get no pullback at all, uh, the minimum time frame for it to go sideways in a rectangle is 30 minutes. Uh, I prefer an hour and a half to two hours. This is a two hour one. And because it's already gone up once, twice, this is the third wave up, it's most of the time going to stop at the 1.382, the first fifth target. So. I would have been out of this trade here around 68, but we're in this trade around 52. 
you made about 16 pips while risking about 10. So try to focus on trades that are going to give you one and a half to two times bigger wins than losses.